Now, when in this word that the Bible is using here, uh, we can we can look at nurture as speaking of training and care of the body. Now, this is something that many people would pass by. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to take care of your body, whatever. I got to talk about spiritual things. Mm, this is spiritual. Uh, your body is the temple, the housing of the Holy Spirit. And one of the the signs of a lack of nurture in your life is the inability to care for yourself, even in simple needs, uh, whether it's washing, grooming, self-care, taking care of your body, taking care of your health, nutrition. So all battlegrounds that have to do with eating disorders or body dysmorphia or aspects of hoarding or lack of cleanliness or just simple care routines, they have at its root system a lack of nurture. Nurture helps you to see value in yourself so that you care for yourself. And so, for example, if somebody's uh, room is messy or their their car is just always a disaster and there's just garbage everywhere. Um, for example, in the car example, it shows a lack of care for the car that they have of valuing it and taking care of it. It's actually a lack of nurture. And and many in their own body, they, they're disconnected to loving care and loving nurture. They become an enemy to their own body. So therefore, uh, being able to live in the training of nurture uh, the development of how to care for themselves has has not been in place in, in the way that it's needed. I know for myself, when I began to embrace a healing journey in my life, I had severe lack of nurture, severe lack of attention to just simple uh, self-care for uh, my life and my daily routines. And it was something I had to slow down and make room for in my life because I saw the worth and value I had because of the love that God has for me. To see myself, like David said, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made and connecting to that. Why would I want to do anything that's harmful to myself or have abusive practices towards myself or even let an inner critic dominate my life when God's care is there for me. So I want to unite myself with the love and care that God has for me. So much just in that one sentence. It also involves correcting mistakes, but this is not just a, hey, go to your room. It's walking with. I'm, I'm in that stage uh, on a weekly basis with my children of navigating how to bring correction, but in a way where we're walking through this. It isn't just stop doing that, stop doing that. It's we're going to take a little, we're going to take a little path here. We're going to have some conversation. We're going to talk through, and there's going to be affirmation and, and love connected. There's going to be affection there, but there's going to be proper teaching and training. Now, the third one here, this is major. This is major because when you're equipped with nurture, it helps you to live in proper emotional self-control and knowing how to curb your passions we are manifesting a society that is searching to just let their passions, whatever urges, whatever things are rising up of just uh, of unbridled appetites. And so therefore things like lust take over and they become predominant cultural expressions that people live in. Nurture recognizes, okay, you have a feeling, you have an emotion, it doesn't mean you need to act on it. And this is something I teach a lot to OCDers is how you have a thought coming through. You don't have to feed it. You notice it, but you let it pass on through. You don't have to act on it. The good news is if you're working through a healing journey with OCD, you can develop a tremendous amount of self-control, a tremendous amount of being able to curb passions because you learn to let nurturing love fill those places in your life that lust or these, uh, uh, um, these appetites are trying to pull you into. I've just gotten started with what this word means. It's about instruction to increase virtue in your life. The fruit of the spirit character being developed in your life comes out of nurture. Even the subject of chastening, which Hebrews talks about. Now, chastening is a subject that's at, it's, 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 it's in the top 10 of um, scrupulosity, religious OCD, where people are afraid of that subject. 
And the reason we're afraid of the subject of chastening is because we've never experienced loving discipline in a way where it marked us in a good way, where we gained a great reference of it. We have a punishment-based relationship with God and with people in general um, that you think anyone in authority contacting you, it means the hammer's coming down. We're, we're afraid of that. We're constantly fearful of any correction. And it, be, it has to do with our references. And when you understand nurture, chastening, correction, discipline are actually not things to run and hide from. They're actually things that you embrace. And, and even the Hebrew writer mentioned when you're being disciplined, it shows that you're sons and you're not illegitimate children. Uh, this is not God casting you away. This is God increasing his nature in your life. But it usually comes through wrestling and, and struggles and battles. And a lot of our mental health battlegrounds are hitting areas where we're needing to, to learn how to walk through a journey to see God's nature manifest more in our life. I've seen, as I've just gone through, I looked back and I went, hmm, I saw some chastening there. That was some stuff. There was some, there was some anger being worked out. There was, there was perfectionism, striving being worked out of my life. And there was, um, there was um, oh, the way I expected things or control issues were being detoxed. And I didn't even know it. I was just walking my journey and trying to learn along the way.